talk about open source, and that may confuse you because this is the Free Software Foundation Europe Assembly, which is of course about free software. But it doesn't matter so much because, okay, let's go back what these terms mean. Um, free software is usually defined by the four freedoms, and I'm taking this from the Free Software Foundation Europe web page, the, the freedom to produce, study, share, and improve the software, which is like what we're used to, like for example, it's a Linux kernel, everyone can download it and use it, we can get to, we can get the source code and analyze it, and we can share it with others, and we can change the source code. Um, for open source, there's a, a ten-point definition. I have not put on all its points because that would be a too long slide. But if you actually look at them, it says more or less the same. And I like to phrase this as free software and open source are basically the same thing. They're just different ways of looking at the same thing. Um, and the, usually the idea here is that the term free software is used by people who want to emphasize user freedom, while open source is more from people who may focus on what kind of businesses you can build around it and kind of the technological aspects. But it's really we're talking about the same thing here. Uh, and everything that, every license that qualifies as a free software license also qualifies as an open source license and vice versa. Um, and sometimes people use the, the terms FOSS or FLOSS like for free and open source software or free liberal open source software. Now we have a microphone. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, um, yeah. So uh, I often like to use those because it's kind of inclusive. You're saying like it's this one big thing. We're using different terms, but it doesn't really matter. Um, there are also like different kinds of free and open source software. Some some licenses have this idea of copyleft, which says yeah you can change this, but if you change it and then give it to someone else, they have the same freedoms. So you also have to give them the code. And there are other licenses that don't require this, so you can take this code and then make a proprietary product out of it where you don't have to give away the code. And there are also licenses that don't require you to do anything, not even mentioning where you got it from, like for example the CC0. Um, and of course there are things that are not open source or free software. For example, if you provide code but you're not allowed to change the code, that's neither free software nor open source. That's just, I mean, maybe it's some form of open code, but it's not what we're talking about here. Uh, and also software that is not allowed to be used for certain things. For example, you say you don't like someone and this person is not allowed to use it, or you say it's not allowed to use it to do certain things. Um, and this is also kind of obvious, but these days uh, free and open software is extremely successful. And when I made this slide, I kind of realized how, how big of an impact this is and also in how many different areas it is successful. Like if you look at these logos, I mean you probably don't recognize all of them, but we have things like operating systems, we have messengers, video players, programming languages, basic libraries, browsers, web servers, all kinds of things where uh, free and open source software is extremely successful. Um, and of course, uh, free and open source software has advantages for the user, uh, like uh, no one can tell you what you're allowed to do with this software. Um, if you have the technological background to be able to do it, you, you are allowed to change it and adapt it to your needs. And if you're not, then you maybe <coughs> could pay someone else to adapt it for you. Um, and it's also, I think that's a very important aspect, it's more resilient to change. So if, if you have a company developing a software and then the company no longer exists or they are no longer interested in the product, then it usually just goes away, right? But if it's a, if it's a free software, then other people can pick it up and continue development. Um, and also, if uh, and there I'm getting closer to the issue I mostly want to talk about today. If you use a service that's based on a free software, 
or you, you buy support from someone, then you may have the opportunity to go to someone else. You're not restricted to the company who made the software, but other people can offer the same service or similar service based on that. Um, yeah, free and open source software can also have advantages for the people who develop it. Uh, and one of them, and I think this is uh, extremely important, it has a good reputation. Saying something is open source, that just sounds good. A lot of people like that. Um, you may have contributions from the community, which can be uh, new features, but also sometimes just bug reports that help you to make uh, to find bugs in your software. Uh, and also, some people will just not avoid using your software if it's not free. For example, I try to use as much free software as I can, and in many cases, if I have a choice between a free product and a non-free product, even if doesn't cost money, but if it's, I don't have access to the code, I will choose the free. Um, and also, if some distribution channels for software don't accept software that is not free in open source software. For example, uh, Debian Linux, they are saying in their distribution, all the packages are uh, under the free Debian free software guidelines, so if you have something that is not uh, under a free license, then it cannot be part of the main Debian distribution. Um, but from a developer perspective, there are also things you cannot do. So you cannot control what the people do with your software, and you cannot control who uses your software, and you can sell a software, but once you sold it, uh, you cannot usually not stop people from getting it for free because the person you sold it to can copy it to others um, and can put it on the internet that explicitly allowed it to get part of the ID. Um, you can sell support for your software, but you cannot stop stopping others from also selling support for your software and they may even sell better support for your software. And you can sell services based on your software, but you cannot stop others from doing the same. And sometimes there are people who want to have the good reputation of free software or open source, but they don't want to accept these things that they cannot do with it. And what shall they do? They can lie. They can say it's open source, although it's not. Or they can cause confusion. And that, that's where I'm getting to the topic of today. Uh, we have to talk about this uh, cloud. So I think, yes, everyone knows that uh, cloud computing is big these days. Um, companies like AWS or uh, Azure or Google Cloud, they are very successful, very big. A lot of people use their services. And obviously, these cloud providers also provide services based on free and open source software. So here yeah, are screenshots, and you can see not everything here is uh, open source software, but on the left you can see AWS, you can install a WordPress image or Debian, um, and yeah, all these cloud providers provide many services that are uh, based on open source software on free software. Um, and now you can say, yeah, okay, that's kind of normal and kind of expected because, yeah, this software is free, everyone can use it, so AWS, of course, they can use it and they can offer uh, you to use it on their <coughs> service. Why not? But um, some people seem to think otherwise. Uh, here's an article on TechCrunch, um, which has the title The Crusade Against Open Source Abuse. Um, and this guy thinks that this is abuse when a cloud provider uses a free software. Um, and lately we had some instances where companies were changing their licenses to protect them from this abuse from cloud providers. Um, the first thing that came up was the so-called Commons clause, which uh, is an extension to other licenses. So you have a license, uh, I don't know, Apache 2 was a typical example, and then you add this additional clause. Um, and this is relatively short. Uh, without limiting other conditions in the license, the grant of rights under the license will not include if uh, the license does not grant you to the right to sell the software. 
So you're restricted in what you can do with this, and they expand a bit on it, and basically what they're trying to say, say is AWS and Google and all these cloud providers should not sell services without software. Um, and this kind of became big when Redis announced that they will adopt this Commons clause. Um, their first announcement was a bit unclear, so people thought Redis would use that new license condition, which was not the case, but I was not so sorry for them because it was kind of their own fault that their communication was very confusing. Um, Redis itself, at least they say, will stay under BSD license, but they are using some modules they relicensed under this new license. Um, then there was this um, new license called server side public list. A question what is Redis? Uh, Redis is a NoSQL database, so it's I keep on trying to keep on. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Power of dust. I don't know. I don't use these things. I, I heard this is like when you want to use a database, but you don't want to learn SQL. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people. Um, uh, yeah, the next example was uh, uh, MongoDB. They used something called the server side public license. And this was a bit more interesting. So um, they claim that this is an open source license, and they even asked the open source initiative to adopt it. Because like the open source initiatives, these are the people who wrote this open source definition, and they kind of have a list of licenses that they say they approve that this is an open source license. Um, this is a bit longer, but uh, so the, the, the important thing here is that the idea they have here is that if you offer a service with that software, then everything you use also has to be under this license. Including, they are pretty explicit about this, um, user interfaces, application program interfaces, automation software, monitoring software, backup software, storage software, and hosting software, all such the user can run an instance of the service using the uh, source code you make available. Um, so th this kind of sounds a bit like a, 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 a strong version of copyleft, because we noticed, yeah, if you change Linux, then your changes also have to be under GPL. Um, but it goes much further. Um, basically, I, I would say uh, there, there's no way to fulfill that license, and the, the only idea is to make it completely impractical. And uh, if you read it exactly, is, uh, they worded it in a way that uh, it, it should not apply to normal users, but it should apply to these cloud providers who are offering services based on normal people. So it basically has the same intention like this Commons clause before. They don't want AWS to sell MongoDB services, at least not without having some kind of extra agreement with them. Um, so they introduced this kind of super copy left that is practically completely impractical. And um, for example, this says you cannot r run a service on this uh, on Linux because Linux is released under the GPL, so you cannot relicense Linux under this uh, server side public license. So. Um, yeah. Uh, so essentially, this is uh, an attempt to, to kind of hack the open source definition. Because what they want is inherently not compatible with the idea of open source, but they are trying to find, find a way around it. Um, yeah, there was a third thing, which was the Confluent Community License, which was relatively similar to the first example. So they are basically saying you, you cannot sell a service based on this software. Um, so ultimately, what I think what all these companies want is um, AWS, uh, Google, Microsoft, they shall not be allowed to compete with us with our services because they also, for example, MongoDB, if you look on the web page, you can get a hosted MongoDB from them and they want you to buy it from them and not from AWS. That's what this is meant for. Um, I think that this alone wouldn't be something I would be very worried about because ultimately they could just say, yeah, put that in the license and then it's no longer open source and okay. I mean, I want to have more free and open source software, but I can live with 
if a few projects are no longer part of our community. Um, but what these companies want is they kind of still want the positive image of open source, and that is fundamentally incompatible. They, they want the, the good things, but they don't want to have the things that come with it. Um, and what I think they're doing is that they're trying to cause as much confusion as they can, so it kind of sounds like they're still open source. Um, they're not always lying, so there's a, for this kind of course, there's a web page and there's an FAQ and it's pretty explicit. There's a question, is this open source? And it's no. It, it expands a bit on that, but that's clear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is one of the Redis modules under this Commons clause, and it says Ready Search is an open source for texts and whatever it is. Um, <laughs> that's a lie. Why? Why is it a lie? Open source. Uh, because it's not open source, the license under which they publish it. It's not open source. Open source. No, I mean it's this license where they say in their FAQ, is this open source? No. Wait, wait, wait. Well, this is, this is not really use the, they don't use the comments clause, they use the SSPL. So. No, no, Redis uses the comments clause. Oh, yeah. Right, right. Um, yeah. Um, then this is from the blog post where they introduced this, um, initiated by a collision of Trump infrastructure companies to protect their rights. Commons clause is a condition added to existing open source software to create a new and combined software license. Now this is what I would call confusion, because this they say, okay, it's added to an existing open source license, so it kind of sounds like, yeah, we have open source, and then we add something to it that kind of sounds like it. So it, it's not explicitly wrong, but I would say this is confusing. And then they say uh, the combined license maintains all conditions of the underlying open source license, but limits commercial sale of the software. I'd say this doesn't make any sense. It's kind of contradicting in, in, this, in itself. Um, there's an organization called FOSA, which is um, is kind of their work uh, behind all this. So they were kind of collaborating with these companies to do these license last strangers. Their motto is modern open source management. I mean, you probably wouldn't think that modern open source management is a way of saying we help open source software to be no longer open source. Um, um, then this from Confluent, uh, they basically say this is irrelevant for you because, like, I mean, for those who aren't commercial cloud providers, 99.999% uh, of the users of these projects, this adds no meaningful restriction of what they can do with the software. What they're trying to say is, yeah, I mean, if you're AWS, then you're affected by this, but you're not. I mean, nobody here in the room is probably the CEO of AWS. <laughs> so it doesn't really affect you. But I mean, this, this is, um, yeah, that they're trying to tell you this is, I mean, maybe it's not technically open source, but it's not really relevant for you. Um, but I think this is bogus because you may not be AWS, but you may want to use them, right? You may be a customer of them. And I mean, I don't know who here in the room is using AWS or Azure or Google Cloud. I mean, it's the wrong audience, but still like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and even if you're, if you run the software yourself right now, you still may want to say, okay, but I want to keep my options open. Like, I don't know, maybe I run it now on my own server, but maybe next year I want to go to some provider that offers this. So I think this is relevant if you use that software, not just if you're the CEO of AWS. Um, so yeah, so this isn't a, a kind of minor issue. I think this really goes to the core of what free and open source software is supposed to be. Um, but then you have this, I mean, where they're trying to gain sympathy, where they're saying, yeah, this is really, but we need to fund development of free and open source software. And I mean, I think that 
that that's definitely a legitimate issue, right? I mean, we have a lot of problems that uh, these projects are underfunded, that you suddenly find out, oh, there's this super important library, everyone's using it, and it's programmed by one guy who never saw a dollar for it. That's not mad. But I really think this is, I'm not sure if this is what we're talking about here. Um, this is the stock from Mongolia. Um, so they went to the stock market. I found it because like, I, I wrote an article about this license change from MongoDB and I wanted to look what other media was writing about it. So I went to Google News and typed in MongoDB and I was surprised that a lot of financial market web pages showed up. I mean, what an interesting stock option uh, MongoDB is. So their stock kind of doubled within a year. Um, um, Redis Labs, they are not on the stock market, but they got like $44 million from Goldman Sachs. Um, yeah. um, so, I'm wondering, is this about developer funding or is this about investor expectations? Mm -hmm. So, I'm not sure we're like having the right debate here. Um, and then I found this, which I found very confusing. Um, Mongoli managed management said customers were interested in utilizing features across all of the large multiple cloud providers. I, that was what they were trying to prevent with their license. And in addition to preventing customer organ management explained that many customers wanted to take advantage of the different unique features each large cloud company provides. In retrospect, MongoDB's cloud neutral positioning continues to be an advantage even as it competes with the very same cloud companies that have their own database offerings. So, I don't know, we're really just saying that um, the, the, the advantage of their database is what they're just trying to prevent with their license change. I, I don't know. Um, um, is there a threat to open source? Because uh, this TechCrunch article at the beginning we had this subline cloud infrastructure provided threat and the viability of open source. I think open source is doing really fine. I don't think there's a threat. Maybe there's a threat to those companies' business models. <laughs> there's this thing with evil big cloud. Because, I mean, one thing they're also trying to do a lot they're trying to gain sympathy by saying this is the big Amazon, Google, the big bad companies. But I really think this is framing that that doesn't really get to the issue and that shouldn't really matter because whether you like Google or whether you like Amazon is, is completely irrelevant if we're discussing what open source is. So yeah, a few conclusions. Um, I think we should demand clarity and reject confusion about the terms free software and open source. Something either is open source or it's not, and there's no in between. And you can be part of that community and you can leave that community, but yeah, you cannot have it both ways. Um, we should talk about better funding for free and open source software. Um, but I don't think not publishing free and open source software is a way of funding open source software. Um, and in general, I think free and open source software is doing fine. Yeah. stupid incompatibility with something and you want to change it. So there can be good reasons for that. 
But you can only do that if you have the full rights to the software. So if you have, or I mean, it depends if you, if it's. I mean, some licenses allow you to change it to proprietary. Right? If you have BSD code, you can make that. But if you have a GPL project with many contributors, then you cannot like to change that. So what do you think about eGPL? And uh, what is it like this? Uh, like a, probably not, but uh, there's like a problem with like a GPL license software that cloud providers modify it and don't have distributed mm -hmm. changes. And AG, AGPL uh, prevents that. But the yeah. company said that AGPL is not really well enforceable for them, so they chose the scratch. Um, no, I, I, I mean, there, there, so, okay, so, and the, the general idea of AGPL is that if you offer a web service or some, or some network service, then the same copyleft things apply like if you sell a GPL software, because very often the software you're using is not running on our own machine, so AGPL tries to tackle that. Um, I think it's largely irrelevant to that debate because I mean uh, I think MongoDB was a GPL before, yeah, yeah, yeah. and <coughs> I mean they're, they're like Amazon is not violating their, their license. I mean Amazon is just offering MongoDB completely in line with the a GPL. Um, so yeah, yeah. <coughs> Um, yeah, could you go back to the slide before the conclusion, like before you went? Uh, like, well, you, you wrote conclusion in one slide, and you said before that. Uh, okay. Yes, that's one. Well. Yeah. So exactly, like I, I absolutely uh, agree with this. But earlier, when you were talking about the SSPL, you mentioned that the clauses mentioned they are impractical. Yeah. Isn't it as irrelevant whether it's impractical or not for the license to be open source? <laughs> I mean, I guess this is a tricky issue because we had, I think we, we haven't had this before that people were kind of trying to hack the definition. Um, but I think uh, open source is not kind of a technicality, so, but it means something for user freedom. And if you say you as a user are allowed to offer services with this, but in practice you can't because it's not possible, that's kind of, so I feel this is kind of cheating. I know. I, I, would, I would imagine, like, just imagine, like, it is actually possible what that would mean for us. Like, imagine, like, actually, Amazon would now open source all the management software. It would be absolutely amazing if you could use the same API in the same infrastructure they have built internally on top of the Linux kernel, for example. Huge patch set on the Linux kernel that they are not releasing. And all the software that they have built around that and they only all company exists only because of that. But I mean it's not saying that you have to release it, but if they say it, you have to release it under their license, which means for example for the Linux kernel you cannot do that. Okay, yeah, that was actually another question. So that's that's it's that's written in the license. I haven't read that yet. They they say that you have to release it under their license. Okay. Yeah. Uh anyone? Yeah. Yes. Just a small question to verify on on the false. Uh, also, the uh, uh, comments was uh, so it really it, it, it restricts really the cloud business, but it, it still would again we would still allow products to be sold unless like they're solely built to, to provide. Google and Amazon in practice they just this license just to suit them. They could actually just pay some money. To them. So yeah, if they so get an agreement, with yeah, sure. But that's kind of not what I'm interested in because like my perspective is the free open source community. If Google and MongoDB get to some agreement, yeah, but my point is I don't want MongoDB to confuse the public in yeah. Um, I'm not sure who was first, but when the license is changed, um, do the old do the old revisions keep the old license? Yeah, yeah, sure. Once okay. if something is released under a license, then this gives you the okay. right to it. So, so you can always fork the old versions and continue. And I guess that will happen for some time. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah.
The AGPL was released in 2007, I think. Like you said before, the Mongo DB used to be licensed on this and they changed it to the SSPL. Do you think one of the problems is, and the GPL3 was even earlier than this, do you think one of the issues is maybe that uh, there hasn't been, it doesn't look like as much innovation in terms of like the GPL4 or the successes to the AGPL that fixes some of the concerns that these companies have? No, and what kind of complaints in OSI Medical that software conservancy made on this about the SSPL is there wasn't any community drafting for this mm. license. Do you think there's any scope for some other, like a AGPL plus or something? I mean, the question would be what that would be, because sure. I, I think fundamentally, if, you're, if your license is a free license, then I believe AWS can sell services based on it. So I don't think within the idea of free and open source software you can have a license that gives these companies what they want. Yeah. Yeah, like you were like you gave your assessment somehow that like you think that open source free software is doing fine. But at the same time you're like uh, presenting some uh, cases of in which we are yeah. open PGT was not doing fine. Uh, or open, I mean they have funding now. Right, right. now they do, but like so um, I guess so. What what is your proposal for like funding? Yeah. I guess maybe that's a discussion. Yeah. Can. Okay. I mean, I, I thought that uh, I felt that would quickly get out of hand and get its own talk. <coughs> um, I, I mean, what I, I think the most promising things are. Man, I mean, many of these things just come out of companies that use some project and then just release it. Um, the other thing is, I, I think there is a certain willingness in these large companies to fund projects they depend upon. Um, we should try to push that further. I mean, the idea that if you're a large IT company that profits from open world all the time and in many different places, um, and it's also like often not a lot of money we're talking about, right? I mean, funding one person is irrelevant for Google. So, um, so my hope there would be that we can get more to a situation where not just software companies, but all companies, we have this idea that, yeah, they, they pay something back voluntarily and ultimately we won't stop them from, that some won't do it, but that is kind of a, yeah. Yeah, so if I understand, the root of the problem was the introduction of common clothes, right? That was the first example. Yeah, that, that's where I got lost. Yeah. <laughs> so, which one of the four freedom the common clothes uh, breaks? Um, because must break one. Uh, yeah, <laughs> otherwise there's no problem. We can't use it how we like it. I guess you cannot use it how we like it. What do you mean, how you like it? Yeah, I mean, it's four, it's four points and one must be... Yeah, I, mean, it, I, I just put the verbs, but if you read the whole text, it says that you can use it for any post that you want. Including commercial. Including commercial and including selling services, including selling different. So that's one use case to, to offer a hosted model. Yeah. Uh, I wonder, is this a case of illegal uh, false advertising because if I say my software is free and open source but in fact it's not and I'm a company and I say that in my advertisement so this, this sounds like false yeah. advertisement to me so I, I mean uh, I'm, I'm maybe, not a lawyer uh, uh, these companies may be suitable for, for saying their software is free and open source but in fact it's not it's a lie, so that's what's that. Uh, I'll have to, yeah, I mean. So maybe <coughs> we, we can get these companies by legal. Uh, but I mean, probably, if you sue them for this, they'll probably just change it. I'm not sure if that gives you that much. Um, so, but this, uh, with the point of the talk was uh, companies claim that software is off source, but it's not. This, yeah. this I fully agree, this is a big problem. So this has to stop. This but not, this, uh, this but it's also, I mean, the, I, I took this as an extreme example, but very often it's that they're using very confusing language. 
Well, that they, that's much harder to steer, I guess. But I mean, maybe you can. I I won't do it, but maybe there are organizations who are interested in that. Um, yeah. As far as I understand, <coughs> these two new uh, licenses um, became. Uh, needed because suddenly cloud providers make money by providing hosting. Um, yeah. my, my question is, um, in what way does being a cloud differ from just selling hosting? <laughs> I guess it's just larger. <laughs> <laughs> But you can, like, you can try it in your um, license. You can sell hosting unless you are named with rhymes with Smoogle. <laughs> Um, because hosting always was fine, and that's a common thing to do with free software, so I don't understand why suddenly it's evil just because it starts with a C. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, open source is a trademark term owned by the OSI, and it's not written like that, yeah. which I still think is a trademark violation. But the open source initiative could change that any day, and it would be still be open source with big O and big S. Whereas free software uh, is slightly different in the in its licenses that they approve of, but it's also a shitty term. For example, it doesn't necessitate uh, copyright, which is an interesting uh, addition to it. And that it requires redistribution. But what I want to ask is, do we need a term for software that you need to run on open source hardware without any known defects? Because that would be a requirement, but I wouldn't have to do any other reading. It's just like that one. That one's a good one. It's not another term. <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's another question for me. Yeah, it was. OK. I think that's no, I, I... I assume that you would you use copyleft software over free software, where the where I is it? personally don't expect that. I, I guess we're getting into other discussions. Maybe we can have that later. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah, even though I, thanks. Uh, you said like, uh, we need some kind of definition and... Uh, no, no, we have a definition. <laughs> <laughs> we need to be clear about that definition. That's what yeah, I mean, maybe it's some kind of simple with uh, ACID-like test for some kind of licenses, so you can just like go no, no, and check no, no, no. We we all have we have kept that all. Like just yeah, the definition. Mm -hmm. It's a link, and like yeah, here's, here's your checklist. Like we, we have all that. But I think you're being confusing when you're talking about free software, capital F, capital S, and you're saying it has these four freedoms, and you're saying that MIT license is free software, is free free software license. Which is not on those other than you can find it. Why is it not? Because it doesn't it doesn't require that you um, uh, maintain those free Yeah, but that's not part of the definition. Uh, I, I mean, we're getting into technicalities here, but I mean, the, even the Free Software Foundation has always accepted that these permissive licenses are all part of the Free Software family. That's kind of different flavors of Free Software. Right? Um, the, the OSI and the S. Lists of licenses that they accepted, so uh, and you can be quite sure a license that is approved by the OSI and the FSF is definitely a, a false license. Uh, so you can look it up uh, online. Can we do it in order? Um, I would just phrase it as a company struggle between the company that is open source and the companies that happen to produce open source products. Because it's, it seems to me that it's an industry that is coming of age, and the management is coming of age, and it uses all the same tactics that any emerging industry uses. So you try to grow, and then you kick out your competitors. So the, the terms open source are just playgrounds for those management people. And uh, the thing is not to get confused on <coughs> internal struggles at this point and just like try to state the line and act as a company and not as a movement. Yeah, I, I guess there's one more question about the company. <laughs> <laughs> um, and 
I don't want to have this forever. Like, <laughs> if, if, if someone who, who hasn't said anything yet, then I will. But otherwise, I close it. That's okay. Um, maybe some uncommon opinion, and maybe I'm also playing partly devil's advocate, but uh, in the time of uh, software service, uh, it might be a good idea to have something which is totally not uh, uh, open source software, but uh, would have a different name, which is everybody could contribute, and everybody uh, with non commercial usage could, of course, run it. Uh, under their own terms, but as soon as you uh, run into commercial usage, you would have to negotiate a different license uh, with the owner of the of that software. And I think that might be a good idea for a lot of software because it doesn't solve all those problems. It wouldn't be okay. It has been tried before. It was never very successful. Uh, is that a reason to not try? It? I mean, I mean, if, 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 if the most of the yeah. benefits of field of your software are still there, I, I actually don't think that you get most of the benefits. I, I think this is a very crucial difference. Like, if you start going down that road, you, and, and I also, I, I'm pretty convinced that, for example, the Linux kernel would have never been relevant if it had a license like that from the beginning. It did, though. It was GPL one. What And that. Never mind, that was... Uh, <laughs> I'd actually argue that uh, software like Linux kernel and software as a service, as you see, uh, nowadays uh, behave rather differently. And I totally agree with you that software like Linux kernel or the tools like compiler and a lot of fundamental software that everybody needs to use uh, should still be free software. But, but I mean, the, the, the my question thing. to you would be that what you really like to distribute to uh, software that is sold to other big companies because it's all about community building. I mean, to have reliable open source software, you need a reliable community. And so you, you, need, you need people who are inspired and want to work and report bugs and distribute things. And I would never distribute to the software. And I know this is, can, is free for private people, but it is sold from this company. Because and then I think there's no the next yes, group coming, so... Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs>